with moving water and waves, it's essential to watch it for a while before you actually do it. Work out what's happening there and then put it down on paper. It's really exciting. I'm just going to try and get some of the movement of the scene here. It's an absolutely stunning uh, situation with the waves crashing in here uh, at Westdale Bay. Things can come up through on very quickly. Uh, so I need some burnt umber and French ultramarine for these really dark areas. So I need some dark colour behind the wave. The foam coming in and it's perspective on this foam is, is critical. As it comes down like this, it, it sort of flattens out at the bottom. using the brush to soften it off in places. background. This is the finished version of the watercolour sketch of Westdale Bay. All I've done in the studio is added a bit of uh, cobalt blue into the sky to sharpen up the clouds. That's something you can do quite easily with a painting where the sky hasn't quite sort of uh, uh, fit worked for you. I could have added uh, more gulls and, and other bits and pieces in, but I haven't done that. It's only a sketch and I was really most interested in capturing the, the sense of the movement of the sea and the uh, the waves. This is a tremendous view of Tower Point and do a watercolour here. It's so dramatic and the light is incredible. So I'm trying to relate everything to uh, what's already on my sketch <laughs> and that is the, uh, the the window is creating the, uh, the basis for all the other aspects. A lot of uh, white foam and surf coming in here at this point, which makes it really interesting. Great contrast between the, the wet, dark rocks and the white sea. To increase the, uh, the dramatic content of this, I'm uh, going to change the sky completely. Uh, this is uh, dirty Naples yellow. And uh, I'm doing it with um, vertical strokes of the brush to increase the verticality of the of the scene. And this is French ultramarine with some uh, alizarin crimson in it. And 
then with just water on the brush I'm going to lose this end bit here where the cliffs are going to be coming down and soften, soften this off in the distance. The uh, other side uh, where Skomer Island is appearing. This is Skomer Island over here. Uh, what I've got to remember, of course, is that there is a window here, which I've been talking about rather a lot, but I'm quite likely to forget uh, if I'm not careful. This is uh, light red. Dropping these colours in whilst it's still all nice and wet. So this tower here is separate from this one. Uh, so this is further into the distance, but the tones on this one are almost exactly the same, just as dark as they are on, on this one. Uh, but here I'm going to use uh, a bit of uh, artistic license and make this one a little bit lighter in tone, so it pushes it a little bit further away. I'm now putting a touch of silo blue in here, whilst it's all still wet. Uh, there's no silo blue there, but this pushes it back and creates uh, a little bit of an effect there. I've lost one or two of the light bits here, and I'll pull them out later. thing I, I like to do is I, I have a, a quarter inch flat brush here and I'm just going to pull out a little bit of light that I missed out. Uh, this is even more clearly defined now than when I started. The, uh, it's very difficult to predict which way the light will, will go as the sun moves around sometimes. This is a, an incredibly uh, complicated structure of rock. I'm doing this with French ultramarine and uh, cadmium red. So I'm just testing it on the side there. And uh, I just want it to come down vertically like this. And then just a, a, a damp brush, a wet brush, just to add a little bit more interest in the sky. That's a, a much sharper point. And I'm just going to pull out one or two highlights. So that's about it. I love harbours at low tide. They're much more exciting than at, at uh, high tide. You get all these lovely muddy sort of rivulets coming down. You get all these chains leading you into the picture. Ropes coming down off the boats and all these boys. It's, it's very, very exciting and colourful. In this particular scene, I'm not really uh, so interested in the boat itself as the uh, little rivulets and the way the mud wriggles around in the uh, under, under the boat uh, with those beautiful contrasts uh, and the way the rope comes down gets lost and then suddenly comes up again as a chain and comes towards me you can use all this sort of thing as a lead into a boat so look out for these things because they're very exciting this is a rather nice boat to uh, show you the uh, ways of sketching it. It's got some lovely curvy lines. So I'll just do a quick sketch of this. This lovely design, beautiful shape, but these clinker shapes are not easy to render because they, they vary so much. But in this instance, 
with the uh, sun casting a, a, a shadow on this side, we're losing some of the some of the lines of the clinker. So, in fact, that is helping us because we don't need to put them all in. We can just suggest them. Well, uh, we're back in the studio now. Uh, I've shown you how I work out of doors, sketching. Sketching is so vital to capture the movement of the sea and the spontaneity of the moment. And you'll also have seen how I've tackled Tower Point as a painting. I took the opportunity on such a glorious day to do a full alfresco painting, which is a little bit different from the quick watercolor sketch that I did of, uh, of West El Bay. So now what I'm going to do is uh, a watercolour demonstration of Tenby Harbour, and then we'll look at a few uh, other paintings. The demonstration I'm going to do this morning is of Tenby Harbour, and the scene is here with the boats all jumbled up. I don't like the... Uh, way we can see through here. There's too much going on there and so I'm going to simplify it quite a bit. Uh, the original sketch was of this but I've created a studio sketch uh, here simplifying it, getting rid of some of the odd bits of boats here and there, getting rid of the old new lifeboat station that's just creeping in there. I've added in a new boat here in the dinghy which I found at Fishguard and I'm going to put a fisherman in there as well so that gives a little bit of life. So that's the scene. So the little mask is up amazingly high on some of these vessels. Maybe a couple of figures there and it's always nice to have some flagpoles or what have you. So I'm using a squirrel hair mop, nice large brush for the sky and some Naples yellow. It's a lovely colour, it's a paint colour but uh, it's rather rather a pleasant colour because it, it gives a lovely glow. And then the mixture of French ultramarine and cadmium red. And into this I'm just going to drop some Aussie red gold. The colours I'm using at the moment are the uh, Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolours and Aussie Red Gold is a, a lovely colour for uh, giving your painting a bit of zip and bright brightness. Rustic colour into the roof, vary it a little bit, give it a bit of excitement. And this end I'm just going to strengthen a little bit more so French ultramarine and uh, a touch of uh, burnt umber for the shadow side of this boat and the stern. The light is coming from the right of course. So that's the finished picture. I've uh, simplified the harbour quite a lot, but then I would do that anyway because there's just so much boat detritus and other stuff in the picture that you, you do need to simplify it quite a bit. 